Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, if you've ever had a misbehaving app on your smartphone, maybe you've looked around the internet, you've read some forums, and somewhere on the line, someone has said to you, you should do a full stop and a clear cache, that will help your problem. So the question before us today, what is a full stop? What is a cache? And why does a full stop and clear cache actually help fix misbehaving apps? Well, let me explain. Okay, at the very heart of Android is the Linux kernel. And inside of Linux, all programs that run, run in a thing called a process. And the process is a logical container that allows the kernel to know about which programs are running, which memory is allocated to them, what priority they have, how much CPU time they need. And basically in Android, every app that you run actually runs inside of a Linux process. Now I won't go into much more now about Linux processes. I've done a whole video on processes and threads that you can find here on the Android Authority channel. And if you go to the front page of the Android Authority channel, you'll see a playlist for all of Gary Explains videos and you can easily find it in there. Now when you start an application, it starts a Linux process and it can basically go through some different states. Now at the Linux level, it can go through running, runnable, and sleeping. So when a process is, for example, actually on the CPU, it's running. When it's ready to run on the CPU, it's runnable. And when it's waiting for something to happen, like network traffic, it's known as sleeping. Now, Android also has some different states for the activities which make up your app. And those activities include running and paused and stopped. And basically what happens is, is that Linux, uh, sorry, Android can say to an app, you are now in the pause state or you're gonna be stopped, which tells it it's gonna kill it off or it's gonna have to need to save some of its data because it's about to be killed. And what's interesting is when Android wants to stop an app, it doesn't actually stop the app, it just says to Linux, kill that process, which means that the process gets obliterated out of memory all of the memory's freed up, it's not given any more CPU time, all the files that it had opened are closed, any locks that it had opened are freed, and so on. Basically, when Linux kills off the process, everything just disappears, which is a great way to ensure that the app has actually just completely gone. And just like Android can tell Linux to kill a process, you can tell Android to tell Linux to kill a process. And that's what force stop does. Basically, you say to Android, I want this process to stop and it will obliterate it from memory and it will be definitely gone. Now, the reason why that helps is because if you have a misbehaving app, it's got itself into a funny loop, it's got itself into a funny condition and it's not recovering, then by doing a force stop, you're actually killing off the process and then when you restart it, it may very well start back up into a better state and start functioning as it needs be. Another good thing about force stop is that once the process has been deleted, then all the open files have been closed, which means we know the files inside the cache directory are now no longer being used. So what's the cache directory? Basically, the cache directory is a place where an app can store temporary files. For example, if when the app starts up, it needs to download something from the internet, maybe a data feed, maybe some images, it could just download those things every time it starts up or every time you refresh the display, but of course that will take a long time and it will also use up your bandwidth. Much better to get it periodically and then store the files in the cache. And then from time to time, the app can say, hey, should I update these uh, files that are in my cache or are they okay at the moment? And it would also be true, for example, if it was doing some processing, maybe it downloads some data from the internet, but it needs to be uncompressed or decoded or decrypted or something, then actually those files can also go in the cache. And again, from time to time, it can say, do I need to go and get a newer version, the latest version? But when you do refresh the app, when you do restart the app, it can get a lot of its data directly from the cache, rather than having to go out onto the internet to go and get it, or using its processing time to actually decode or decrypt the files. But what happens sometimes is those cache files get themselves in a muddle, namely a bug in the program, or it hasn't refreshed them when it should have done. They, there's newer ones available on the internet and it hasn't brought them down. And what you do by clear cache is you delete all those files. Now that's perfectly okay because our Android apps are written in such a way that it knows that files that are in the cache are only temporary. 
And if they're not there, it doesn't panic, it just goes to the internet again and goes and gets them, or it does the processing again to decrypt or decode or whatever it needs to do to those files. So it knows that there is a situation when a cache file might not be there. So therefore, by cleaning the cache, what you're actually doing is saying to the app, hey, you've got nothing here, let's start again. So by doing a four stop and a clear cache, you're restarting the program with some new, uh, with an empty cache, which means it has to start again with new data. And hopefully that will fix the program. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd like to mention that there is a playlist of all the Gary Explains videos on the front page of the Android Authority YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel. It's also good if you download the app because that will give you access to all our news and features directly on your mobile phone. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.